to AP Computer Science A Unit 3, Boolean Expressions and If Statements. Um, so I've already gone ahead and created the basic code outline. I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, as a reminder. Oh, I already saved it. Uh, so basically, remember that Unit 3, the class name, must match the file name, which is up here. You'll see where it says unit3.java. And we've got our main method here. So in this uh, unit, we're going to be looking at Boolean Express. Expressions. So 3.1 Boolean expressions. Very exciting stuff. Um, a Boolean expression. We talked about it earlier in one of the earlier uh, videos. Basically, a Boolean expression has two possible values. It is either true or it is false. There's no half truths and there's no uh, nothing like that. It is all true and false. So let's take a look at this. We'll say let's say we got x and that is equal to four and we've got y. It is equal to two. So what we can do, uh, we could do something like this, x equals y. Now notice there are two equal signs. Okay, One equal sign means we are assigning a value. So in this case, we're saying that x is equal to 4. In the case where there's two equal signs, we're actually comparing. So we're asking, does x or is x equal to y? So let's r compile that, run it, and see what happens. Okay, it comes out as false, okay, because obviously uh, 4 does not equal 2. Um, so let's change that, just see what, see what happens if we change that number around. And we should get true. Um, let's try this. I'm kind of curious, I don't actually know the answer. Let's say if we compare a double and an int, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, so it does kindly convert that for us. We don't have to worry about that. So it does tell us if those numbers are equal, which is quite nice and a pleasant surprise. So some other comparisons that we can do. Let me just copy this. Okay, we've got not equal to. So the exclamation point means not equal. So is x not equal to y? So 4 is not equal to 2, so that's going to evaluate to true, okay, which is what I expected. Uh, let's try another one. Is x less than y? And then I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple more. Is x greater than y? And let's try those two. So is x greater than y? Uh, oh, is x less than y? No, it's not. It gives us false. Is x greater than y? Yes, it is. That gives us true. And we can also do less than or equal and greater than or equal. Uh, don't make the mistake of reversing the order. It's got to be less than or equal to. And let's try that. Okay, so we got false and true because x is not less than or equal to y, but it is greater than or equal to y. So if I change this y to 4, we'll get quite a different result. Okay. Now it's a little hard because you're not sure which one's which. So since I've already typed it up nicely in my notes, I will just go ahead and copy and paste that so we get some nice formatting. You can see better, a little better what's going on. Okay, so it's just the same thing we just did, but just with little extra uh, characters there to help you understand. And where did I mess up? Okay. Okay, so you just always read the error message. It tells you at line 19, couldn't find the symbol, didn't know what was going on. And let's run that again. Okay, so is 4 equal to 4? Yes, it is. Is 4 not equal to 4? False. 4 is not less than 4. It's not greater than 4. But it is less than or equal to 4. And it is greater than or equal to 4. So I'm going to put that back to 2 just to put that back where it was. So what we can do is we can use this concept, these comparisons, uh, to make sure that or to basically kind of, you know, control the flow of our code. So this is section 3.2. So let me say 3.2. And this is if statements and control flow. Okay, so let's say int age equals 47. Okay, so we can do something like this. If age is greater than 25, 
Or you can put it like this. You don't have to put the spaces. I, I tend to put it because I think it's easier to read. Then we need curly braces for this condition. And I say system dot out oops dot dot print ln. If you are over 25, you can say, wow, you are really old. Which is sad for me. So I am definitely over 25. So let me run that. Okay, it says, wow, you are really old. So because the age is 47. So let's change that to uh, 17 and run that. Okay, nothing happened because you're not over 25. Let's try 25, oops, let's try 25 by itself. And we'll come back to this in a second. And nothing happened because we don't have the, a true condition for this. So let's put that back to 47. So basically what happens, age is greater than 25. So that is true. So basically if true, then do these things. So let's try this. If age is less than or equal to 25, oops, and system.out.print, oops, print ln, congrats, you are still young. Okay, so let's run that. Um, let's change that to 23. Okay, congrats, you are still young. Say 25. Okay, congrats, you are still young. But sadly, once you hit 26, it is game over, apparently. Okay. So, now notice I've got two different if statements with two different conditions. Okay, so we're going to look at a different way here to kind of combine those. So we're going to say, this is section 3.3, if else statements. Okay. So an if else statement okay, is used in a case where essentially you've got two conditions, which is what we have here. Okay. We've got two possibilities, if you're over 25 or not over 25. So in that case, we can simplify our code. We can say if age is greater than oops, greater than 25. Could just copy that, I suppose. And actually, maybe I will do that. Okay. So if you're over 25, now there's only one possible alternative here. Okay, so what I can do is I can say else. So otherwise, congrats, you are still young. Yeah, put an exclamation point there. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so while you are really old, that's from the first one, that's from 3.2. Okay, and you see we get the exact same result here because age is 26. Um, now what we can do is if we say, if you're not over 25, let's make, make that 23 again, you'll see where it prints it out. So that way, instead of putting two if statements, we can just use one if statement and an else. Okay, so that's kind of basically how that works. Um, now, let's imagine a case where we've got three possibilities or more. So I'm gonna, this is uh, if, else if it's called, point four. Um, else if statements. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'll just go ahead and change it. Oops, and that should be 3.4, not 3.3. Okay, so if your age is over 25, else, well, that's what I do here, if your age is, I'm going to say less than 25, so notice those are two different conditions. You're over 25, or if you're less than 25. And then there's one more possibility, which is 25. We wouldn't put else if age equals 25, although we could. Um, but what we would do is the best thing is to do is out print ln. Hmm. You could go either way. Okay. So we have three different possibilities. And this could be 
you know, three possibilities, four possibilities, five possibilities, etc., etc. Okay, so let me run that just to make sure it's working properly. Okay, got an error. Could not find symbol because I said print L N I. Okay, so run that again. So you are still young. And let's try 25 because that's a little bit different between the different options. Um, Okay, so still young, still young, or hmm, you could go either way. Okay, so that's kind of how we do uh, comparisons. Now, just a quick, quick thing to remind you: um, if we are comparing strings, it, uh, this won't quite work the way you think it will. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, our next section is called a compound Boolean expression. Okay, so this is section 3.5. Oops, compound Boolean expressions. Okay, so let's say, for example, double score. So your score on your test was an 87.5%. Not bad. Um, so what we want to do is we want to convert that to a letter grade. So what we do is like this. If score is greater than or equal to 90. Now watch what I do here. And... Okay, that means and. We don't type and, we type two ampersands. And score is less than or equal to 100. Be careful with the, the edges there. So 100, make sure you don't put minus or just less than 100 because if it's 100, you won't see anything. And then what we do is we go system.out.println. Uh, you got an A. So keep that simple. And I'm going to copy that. So we're going to retype this a few times. Okay, so now, what about a B? So we're going to use else if. And maybe I just copy this whole section. And just change it. Might be a little easier. Okay, so in this case, a B would be greater than or equal to 80. Now, is it less than or equal to 90, or is it less than 90? So I would use 90 here because 90 is part of the A. So we'll give you the A if you got a 90. Um, now you can also do 89.5 if you're feeling generous. Uh, but let's just keep it simple for now. And we'll make it less than 90 and that's going to be a B. And then the same thing, we can copy that. Else if, that's going to do a C. And we'll do D. So C is going to be greater than or equal to 70. It's also be less than 80. And that's a C. Depending on what your school system's like, you might be more generous or less generous. So 60 is a D. This is the, the standard uh, system in the United States, at least. And then we'll say else. Now the only thing left basically is else. And you say you know, system dot out dot print ln. Sorry, you got an F. Okay. So let's try that and see what happens. Okay, I did. I got my B, which I'm very happy about. Um, now let's what you need to do if you were if you were properly testing this, you'd need to test not only you know, let's say 85, 95, 75, 65, 55, but you need to test all these different edge cases. So 100 is like right on one of the edges. So test that and make sure it works. Okay, now this, this is very simple code, so it's not such a big deal, but you might want to check 90, make sure it's working. Okay, so 90 is working. So you'd have to go down through and check all of those different values to make sure that there's no errors in your logic of your program. Okay, so that is that. So we have compound uh, booleans. Now this is and, and, but if we wanted to do or, it is two pipes like that. Okay, so that is or. You don't use or, you use two vertical pipes. And if you're using and, it is two ampersands. So be aware of that. Um, hmm. Ah, okay. Next concept that we want to go over uh, is something called short circuited evaluation. And it's, it's w sounds way more complicated than it actually is. So, short 
circuited evaluation. Hey, so let's say, for example, I have int customer age equals 65, so that's the retirement age, and I say boolean is disabled, and I'll say is true, not true today, true. So what, look at this code. What do you think is going to happen here? If customer age is greater than or equal to 65 or is dis disabled. Now notice here, I didn't put equal to true, although I could have. Okay. Because this is already evaluating to true or false, I don't have to put it inside of parentheses. I can just leave it like that. Okay. So I say system.out.println, you are eligible for a 10% discount. Okay, so I'm just gonna run that, make sure it works, and I'll explain what shirt circuit evaluation. Okay, cannot find symbol, and I, I spelled it incorrectly. So let's run that again. Okay, you're eligible, and there we go. I'm much better speller when I'm not talking and typing at the same time. Um, so short circuit evaluation, what this means. Um, so take a look here. Customer age is greater than 60 or equal to 65. Okay, so is that true? And the answer is yes. So because this is true and this is or, does it matter what's over here? So if this is false, it's still altogether true. If this is true, it's still altogether true. So what that means is it actually will ignore this because this is true. It's smart enough to know that because this is true and this is an or, this has got to be true. That's what short circuit evaluation is. Okay, so if I do and, Let's say you have to have both conditions, over 65 and be disabled. But if I say, if you're over 65 and this person is actually 64, okay, and I run that, okay, we won't see anything because there's no else here, but short circuit evaluation. It will check for the customer age being greater, not greater than or equal to 65. This is false. Now, because this is an and, it doesn't matter what this is. If it's true, it's still all false. If this is false, of course it's all false. Okay, so this is what short-circuited evaluation is. Uh, it's basically the compiler uh, basically you know, realizes that this is condition cannot be true or cannot be false based on the first evaluation. Okay. Uh, the next one is kind of a interesting one. Equivalent Boolean expressions. Um, so I'm just going to say, let's say we have two booleans. We have A, and it is false for now. And we have boolean B, and it is true. Um, this is something that will come in handy. You'll probably see a, a one question, at least, uh, on the AP exam uh, dealing with this concept. Okay, so if I type system.out.println, and I'll watch what I do here. Not A, oops, A or B. So let's evaluate this one together. So A is false or B, B is true. So this evaluates the true, but we have the not outside of this whole expression. So true becomes not true, so it's going to print out false. Okay, good, I'm glad that worked. Okay, now watch what I do. not A and not B. Okay. So let's try this together. So not A, so that's true. Not B is going to be false because we reverse it. So true and false is going to be false. Uh, okay, yep. Let's try it again. Okay, so these are equivalent Boolean expressions. Okay, let me do two more, and then I'll explain how this works. Um, I got not A and B, 
in the system dot out dot print ln. So this should be not a. Maybe you you see the pattern already. Uh, this is something called De Morgan's Law. And let's run that. Make sure it's working. I'll explain it. Okay, so we got false, false, true, true. Okay, so what you see here is notice that this exclamation point is outside of the expression. So A or B. And so if you want to find the equivalent expression here, you distribute the exclamation point. So the A gets an exclamation point, the B gets an exclamation point, and you reverse this. So this is or. So we reverse that to and. Same thing down here. We distribute the exclamation point. So we got exclamation point A. We distribute it to B as well, so exclamation point B. And we reverse the sign, okay, or the, the operator there. Okay, so that is like I said, something called De Morgan's Law. Um, it will come in handy when you're trying to solve these types of problems on the exam. We'll do more practice with that in class, of course. Uh, and now the final part of this, comparing objects. Okay. Um, so thus far, what we did with comparisons, it was all primitives. We used ints, uh, we tried a couple doubles, um, and we also used uh, booleans. Okay. Now with objects, things are very, very different. Sometimes they behave how you would expect, other times they do not. So let's take a look at the following example. So let's say we got string name equals Christian. And, oops, let's call it string name one. String name two equals Christian. Okay. So I'm going to type system. Uh, where's that here? Yeah, system dot out dot 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 print ln name one. System dot out dot print ln name two. And then I'm going to say system.out.println name1 equals name2. So now what do you expect to happen? Does name1 actually equal name2? Okay, so let's try that. Okay, true, because Christian and Christian are the same. At least that's what you think. Okay, so now watch what happens. Say, I'm going to change name2. Miego. Okay. And then I'm just going to copy this. Okay, we're going to see what happens when we do that. Okay, so in this case, is Mieko equal to, or is name one equal to name two? And the answer is false. So Christian and Mieko are different. So, so far, so good. Everybody's happy. It's exactly what we expected. Okay, now watch what happens. If you recall from an earlier video, there is another way of defining a string. String name three equals new string. Okay, say string name four. And this is the this is how we create objects. This is how we instantiate an object. Um, so remember the dog class we did before? This is how we did it with dogs, but in this case we're using strings. Okay. So let's try that. And I know I gotta change the numbers there. Four. Okay, so let's run this. So now you see name three is Christian, name four is Christian as well. We're printing them out, we're comparing them. And what do you expect to happen? Hopefully you're gonna say true. However, it comes out as false. Okay, so this is a, one of those little quirky thingies. Not nah, quirky isn't the right word, but this is just one of those really deep the way computers work type kind of things. Um, so without going into too much detail, Basically, this Christian, string Christian, and this string Christian are stored in different parts of the computer's memory. Okay. So up here, it automatically stored it in the same place. It recognized the fact that they were the same characters, so they actually pointed to the same place in memory. That actually saves memory for you. Okay. So 
That's why when we said name one equals name two, it literally means they're actually pointing to the exact same spot in the computer's memory. Um, so this is useful in certain cases. Um, in this case, they would be what's called an alias of each other. Okay, however, when you're comparing objects, okay, the value in this case is the same, but the objects are different. It's like if you have two people and they're both named Christian. Okay? So their names are the same, but they are not the same person. Okay? So let me try this here. So now let me try name four equals Diego. Okay, and I'm gonna print that out one more time. And what do you expect to happen here? Okay, name three, four. Uh, missed a semicolon somewhere, as I do. Okay, so Christian Mieko, false, they are not the same. They're not pointing to the same memory location. Okay. And then we can also do one more time. I'm going to go ahead and do, since I already typed this in my notes, so this is getting a little long, so we're making name five and name six again. They are both Christian. But again, they're going to be pointing to different memory locations. Okay. So the way we do this, and this is something we learned previously, and that now you know why. Uh, so we say if name five dot equals, we learned the equals method before, name six oops. We say system dot out print ln the names are the same. And we can put like a little else here. So I say else, else system are not the same. Okay, so let's run that. Oh, what did I do wrong? Okay, if. Here. So it says reach end of file while parsing. So ah, this is reversed. So knew something was going wrong there. And the names are the same. Okay, so when we're comparing objects, we're going to be using the equals method. Okay, and maybe if we have time, we'll learn a bit, bit more about how that works uh, in later units when we're writing classes. Okay, so I think that is about that. Um, that was a bit of a long one. But just a quick review, we did Boolean expressions. They are either true or false. And we can compare using two equal signs if something's equal. There's two things are equal. Not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Again, these are primitives, so integers, uh, doubles, and or integers and doubles, and Boolean, sorry. Um, so then here we did some comparisons. We used an if statement basic if statements. We used if else in a case where there's two possibilities, either yes or no. And we use else if in a case where there's three or more possibilities. We learn how to check for two conditions using and, the ampersand, so double ampersand, I should say. And notice there are these are wrapped in parentheses. So it's parentheses inside parentheses. And we, again, we use if, else if, and else at the bottom. Talked about short-circuited evaluation. Again, it's something that happens in the background. We don't really see it happening, but it's just something to be aware of that it is something that does uh, occur uh, in case you're expecting something to happen. Um, and then we talked about equivalent Boolean expressions. Again, this is De Morgan's Law, and you will need to know this for taking the test, or I should say it's very helpful for taking the test. And then comparing objects, we talked about a little bit how to compare an object. We can't use equals equals because that is comparing to say if they are the exact same object, not just the same value. Uh, and you see how we get inconsistent results uh, depending on the way the objects are defined. And we don't want that to happen. So to avoid that, we use the equals method. Okay, so stay tuned for more.